All right, just now started overflowing. And uh, you can see I have just a very small amount of water coming out of here. Pretty ridiculously small amount of water coming out of there. And it will siphon like that. It's going to take longer, but that's not the point. <laughs> the point is, you know, I'm fine tuning it. I'm getting it to siphon uh, with a minimal amount of water. Obviously, you're going to want more water than that, but, you know, not everybody can just go out and buy a new pump. You know, you maybe you put your system together and you're trying to get things to working. And so the ABS siphon, the above bed siphon, technically it is an above bed siphon. It will siphon straight down. It's got enough water coming in it. But the, the siphon firing, uh, you know, on, I've had problems with some of my siphons. Some of them just work every time. Some of them, you know, it takes a little bit longer. Sometimes it may take a good while longer, but they eventually siphon. They always break siphon. So breaking the siphon is its strong point. Whereas it's a little weak sometimes in uh, uh, the firing, the soften firing. Uh, but it will fire, and there's a number of tweaks that you can make. And so uh, it doesn't have to be an above bed only soften. I've come up with some tweaks, and so I'm going to tell you about all my tweaks as we uh, watch this soften on a ridiculously small amount of water. It's, uh, it, you know. The, one of the tweaks I talked about earlier, and this, by the way, this is a two and a half inch pipe. I have not miniaturized this to fit in the six inch drain. I will, uh, or I may use some smaller pipe. I would just throw this together just to do an experiment that's working. It's two and a half inch pipe. It's a two and a half inch to two inch to reducing elbow, and then a two inch to one and a quarter inch. It's softening now to uh, in a hat, two inch to uh, one and a quarter inch reducing elbow. Stick them together, and obviously, like I said earlier, you wanna keep the bends in the pipe, these bends in the pipe, just down below the surface there, as high as you can, because that way, you're siphoning your flow, your rate of flow, remains at a high level through the cycle. If you put it closer to the bottom of the grow bed, then as it starts getting low when it's about to break siphon, it starts slowing down. Your rate of flow starts decreasing. And so, you know, that the point is I want to cycle as quickly as possible. And, and the main thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to have all of my grow beds, and uh, not my grow beds, my sump tank and my fish tank down at or below ground level. And so uh, in the wintertime, it'll be very easy uh, to heat the water, you know, because I'll be using the thermal mass of the earth. And so the water will be out and return back on, you know, quick cycles, 15 to 20 minute intervals. So the water, you know, is going to stay in those large bodies of water at or below ground level, you know, for most of the time. And just small amounts, you know, going out 15 to 20 minute intervals. And uh, I'll heat it on the way out and it'll be out just 15 to 20 minutes and back in the... Uh, large bodies of water uh, at or below ground level. So that's why I'm tweaking it because I want the siphon to fire quickly every time and then I want it to drain very quickly and so by putting the bins in the pipe high, which I don't have them as high as I'm going to have them later, uh, but just I'm explaining to you, put the bins in the pipe here as high as you can, get them much higher, you know, cut your tubing off, get it high. And it will stay at a high rate of flow all the way through the uh, siphon cycle, and uh, you'll get a strong break instead of a slow, you know, drawn out break in, in your siphon. One of the other, and like I said, this is two and a half inch to one and a quarter, and then that brings me to my other tweak, which is putting two bins in the pipe below the bed. 
you know, they don't have to be there, but it's just part of perfecting the above bed siphon. Is now it is yes a above and a below bed siphon um, so I can you know so what I'm just tweaking it perfecting it it, it works better than the bell siphon for me not even close uh, so I noticed earlier I had it about a four inch drop below the bulkhead and then I had four inch runoff. And then before it turned back down, you know, just two bends in the pipe, about a four inch drop and about a four inch runoff. And then, you know, back down. And that was about the sweet spot. You know, I tried longer pipe, I tried shorter pipe. And uh, so finally I thought, well, what will it do if I decrease, you know, the drop from the bed? And so I, I decreased it, I cut it back, and uh, there we go, there's our break, and uh, I decreased it, and when I did, I had to decrease the runoff as well, and so uh, strangely enough, I've got about two, inch, two inches of drop and about two inches of runoff, so that seems to be the sweet spot, you know, however much drop seems to be about how much runoff you want you know so if you have a you know a two inch drop you know cut your pipe about two inches and uh, get a good snug fit with your uh, elbows that seems to be the sweet spot and i went with a three quarter inch pipe on the underside still you can see i mean it's 40 uh, gallon tank i got quick drain uh even though it was a smaller pipe on the underside of the grow bed. But it, you know, I was able to get a minimal amount of water to siphon, a very minimal amount of water going into my grow bed and for it to still siphon relatively quickly. You know, so if you don't have a big enough pump, there, there's, you know, there's still some things you can do you know, uh, to make things work. Uh, so once again, you can use whatever size, you know, pipe you want. Like I said, this is two and a half to one and a quarter. I mean, I use different sizes. I've had, you know, varying results, you know, obviously the bigger pipe works faster, but then I went with a three quarter inch on the bottom and that, you know, enabled me to begin siphoning much more quickly with a minimal amount of water because I had a lot of water coming in and then I restricted the flow with a three quarter inch pipe on the, on the underside of the bed and put a few bends in it. So that's just a few things uh, that I've come up with as far as tweaks and I, I don't even know, I don't know what else to do. I've tried everything and I, I'm very pleased uh, with the results that I have right now. So I'm gonna use this next year and uh, go ahead and uh, miniaturize all of my siphons and get them built for my larger system. And uh, as I stated earlier, remember to keep, and that's the whole point of the above bed siphon, you keep your siphon and your drain it's two separate things it's one thing i learned when i uh, made my fish tank to overflow from the bottom you don't have enough room for air and water in your overflow pipe it's going to siphon and it was siphoning my fish tank down fortunately i didn't have fish in it at the time but that would not have been good you know to siphon it empty so uh by using a larger pipe, I had room for both air and water in the pipe, and so it just overflowed instead of siphoning. And so I learned a little bit from that experience. Experience, and uh, so when you know, by having your siphon as short and small as possible, it's much easier to break it. To break that siphon 
and so you can just drop down immediately into a large enough pipe make sure it's large enough for air and water so that when it's full of water there's still air to break the siphon and if you're having problems breaking your siphon you probably don't have a large enough pipe or you may need to put a burp valve an air, uh, an air valve in for it to get some air if you're overflowing into a you know putting oxygen back into the uh, sump tank the fish tank the way I'm doing anyway uh, happy aquaponics I guess